Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Senate President Jonathan Dismang and the Speaker of the House, uh, Jeremy Gillum. And the purpose of this uh, discussion is to uh, bring you up to date and, and announce the appointments of the Marijuana Commission that uh, was the result of the passage of uh, Amendment 6 on the ballot uh, this last year. And as everyone knows, uh, uh, we're rather vocal in our opposition to uh, the amendment. Uh, I was, uh, but uh, the people uh, spoke, and it's our responsibility to take the steps necessary to implement in a fair and responsible way uh, the amendment that was passed by uh, the people of Arkansas. Uh, we have, as a result of that, uh, uh, allocated funds necessary for the uh, review of the regulations and pre preparation of the regulations necessary through the Department of Health and Department of Finance. Uh, they have been meeting on a regular basis, uh, drafting uh, proposed regulations. Uh, I'll be getting briefings on those in the near future before Christmas and uh, perhaps having decision points. I know that the legislature as well is uh, working in terms of uh, their activity that uh, the speaker and the president might speak to a little bit later. In terms of <clears throat> the uh, next steps that we need to take under the amendment, the Marijuana Commission, uh, which has responsibility for the licensing of 20 to 40 dispensaries and four to eight cultivation facilities, uh, we need to set up that commission. Uh, it is designated as a five-member commission in which uh, the governor has one appointment, uh, the speaker has two appointments, and the Senate uh, president has two appointments. Uh, they, uh, once the names are out in the public, uh, uh, they're going to have to meet. They're going to have to do a lot of work uh, to get ready for the process. Uh, the DFNA staff will be assisting them. Uh, in the uh, initial stages of their work. And so with that, I wanted to announce my appointment uh, to the commission as uh, Dr. Rhonda Henry Tillman, who is a surgical on oncologist specializing in breast oncology at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. She is the professor of surgery at UAMS uh, and she's co-director of the Cancer Control and Population Sciences for the Winthrop Rockefeller Cancer Institute. Uh, she is a board certified by the American Board of Surgery. Uh, Dr. Tillman, uh, I've spoken to, uh, meets the qualifications under the amendment, and based upon my uh, personal uh, interview with her and uh, confidence in her, I know that she will uh, do a, ver a job full of integrity as uh, she proceeds to uh, serve on this commission. And now I'm pleased to recognize uh, President of the Senate, Jonathan Dismang, for his uh, announcements and comments. Thank you, Governor. Um, just real quick, just a little bit of background, and it's really about the task that these commissioners have, and that's to oversee the cultivation and dispensing of medical marijuana here in the state. And in addition to that, is to uh, oversee and ensure the proper prescribing between the physician and the payment. Uh, my first appointment to the commission is James Miller. I think most of you in the room know that James is a former chief of staff for the Senate, uh, and he has a extensive knowledge in the rules, regulations, promulgation rules, and, and the ability to carry those out. I felt as though it was very important to have someone with that type of background with both the executive branch and the legislative branch and again, being able to follow through from beginning to end that rulemaking pro process. Uh, second appointment is Dr. Carlos Roman of Little Rock. Uh, he is a pain doctor uh, here in Little Rock, but also very well known uh, because of his commitment to ensuring uh, the protection of both the patients and the doctors in the prescribing of narcotics. Uh, I think that his background is one that is, uh, is needed on the commission again because of their task of overseeing that relationship between doctors and patients, and then also because of his experience uh, with, with pain medicine and, uh, and the fact that this is medical marijuana and, and the usage will be to, uh, for the medicinal purposes. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to the speaker. 
I would, uh, would echo uh, President Desmang's remarks concerning the importance and the responsibility of, of what lies before the commission. Uh, and in looking for my two appointments, I was looking for individuals um, that had a skill set, uh, experiences uh, professionally in both life experiences uh, that would be of value to the commission as they formulated their, uh, uh, their response to the will of the voters and a responsible path forward. And so uh, it is um, today that I, I announce uh, Dr. Stephen Carroll, uh, pharmacist from Benton, uh, will be my first appointment. I believe that uh, having somebody uh, from this world uh, of pharmacy and, and having the skill sets that they uh, bring to the table will be uh, very important. But also, I do believe uh, that we needed uh, some legal expertise in, into this mix as well. And so uh, I'm very um, uh, confident that Travis Story uh, will be a great asset uh, to the Commission as well, uh, being able to help uh, through the process uh, as they uh, pull together uh, the different agencies, rules and regs, and how that we uh, formulate a plan moving forward. I do believe both of these individuals are going to come at this thing in a very fair and responsible way, making sure that we do not uh, in any way hinder what the will of the voters were, but at the same time making sure um, that things are done in a very responsible manner. So, thank you. With that, we have to take uh, any questions. Uh, Governor, all of these seem to fit right in. You, know, you, you got a lawyer, you got a pharmacist, you got a pain specialist. Do you guys get together a few times ahead of time to figure out who's going to pick who for what category? Uh, to the extent possible, we uh, uh, communicated in terms of the type of people that you would need on the commission. And obviously, you can see an emphasis uh, uh, of those in the medical profession, both pharmacy and medical doctors. Uh, that are well represented on the commission because we have to remember this is not a recreational use authorization. It's really not a marijuana commission. It is a medical marijuana commission. And so we're dealing with, with pain medication. Uh, we're dealing with uh, the medical community uh, and the implementation of medicine. And so the, uh, the doctor background, the pharmacy uh, involvement is very important as a balance on the commission but also as uh, and I appreciate what Senator Dismang said in terms of uh, Dr. Roman that has the experience in avoiding uh, over prescribing uh, making sure that uh, uh, it is appropriately used when in pain medication so that in, that's really an enforcement side of medical marijuana. So I think you've got a very good balance uh, on the uh, commission. The, uh, I assume that the, the speaker and the president also voted against, is that true, voted against issue six. How do you, if, if all three of you, I guess if you could explain it, here's a policy that you really don't like having to do, yet you have to do it. And so how difficult or, or, or was it approaching this, trying to put your thumbprint on this? Well, I mean, it's not my goal to put my thumbprint on this. I, I'll, I'll say that. But I mean, must be the people uh, voted. Uh, I mean, they put forward this proposal and it was adopted. Um, and, and I think it's important for us to recognize that. And I do recognize that it was something that had the support of the will of the people. Uh, to speak a little bit to uh, to the governor's point, uh, you know, we did not pass recreational uh, marijuana here in the state. And I believe that, you know, while some uh, of the public may have voted because they wanted to take a step in that direction, I believe the vast majority of those that supported the measure was because they supported the medicinal use of marijuana. And, and again, I think you're, that's reflected uh, in the appointments by, by, you know, all five members of the commission. Now that you've appointed the commission, uh, will members of the commission be independent? And will the legislature remove the change any of the roles uh, of the commission prescribed? Well, they will perform their roles uh, based upon the authorization and authority that they have in the amendment that defines their responsibility. And uh, once we make the appointments, then uh, they are to act consistent with their responsibility under the amendment. Uh, what was the second part of your question? I was just wondering that since the legislature can change the of the amendment with a two-thirds vote, there would be any change. Well, I, 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 I certainly think uh, the speaker I know has engaged uh, some of his members in uh, shepherding uh, legislation on this point. 
uh, I think that remains to be seen, but I'll let the speaker comment on it. Well, I think uh, with, as with much uh, dealing with, uh, with this amendment and the implementation of it, um, it's still very early in the process, and so uh, I, I don't think there's any definitive statements that could be made at this point as to what will happen in the session in regard to this. Um, so that's, I think that's as far as, as we can take it at this time. So. Governor, I wonder if you could reflect on going from being a former administrator of the DEA to now implementing a drug program in the state that, that you fought hard against and, and a drug that you fought against as administrator. Well, it's a position I hope that I would never be in. Uh, and it's not out of allegiance to the DEA, it is out of uh, uh, a belief as to, as you know, what is the proper way that we create medicine in this country through an FDA approval process. But I also believe in our system of democracy, and even while I was head of the DEA, uh, I pointed out that the people will ultimately speak on these issues. Uh, to the question, though, as to uh, what we face now is not a question of how we feel about implementing it. The, the people spoke, we're doing our responsibility. But we are mindful that there is still a conflict with federal law. And uh, uh, what we are doing in terms of implementing the people's will uh, in medical marijuana, it remains a violation of federal law. Uh, it remains to be seen as to what the Trump administration will do in this regard. Uh, we have a new attorney general, and we'll see if there's any additional guidance that goes out. But until we get uh, uh, a change of policy from Washington, we proceed on with uh, the will of the people in this regard. You said you've uh, spoken with the Trump administration by phone and you met in New York. Was this at all a topic of that conversation? No, it's on uh, uh, health care issues. So uh, it was not on this topic. I, I do know. Uh, uh, Jeff Sessions and I were at U.S. attorneys together uh, back in the 80s. Uh, he uh, uh, has went from attorney general then to the United States Senate, but we're, we know each other well, and I look forward to visiting with him about that uh, probably after his confirmation. Um, about the appointment of Mr. Story, um, you could you comment at all about why Travis Story got another lawyer? Um, do you have any special qualifications in this field? If I look at the, the, the Story Law website, I see property law, bankruptcy, but nothing about medical rules and regulations. Well, I mean, there's not a lot of folks uh, that uh, put forth their applications that had that specific background. I mean, that, that's very. T so what we looked for were, were individuals that had a relative experience uh, in, in the law. For me, at least, uh, in looking through this, that was one of the, the uh, prisms of thought that I used. Uh, and arriving at the conclusion that I thought that he would be an asset uh, for this commission. So. Is it hard to find people to do it? No, I mean, there, there were, uh, I think, uh, a surprising number of individuals, uh, from my, at least into my office. I can't speak uh, for the governor or the uh, Senate president on this, but uh, we did have uh, several uh, that did uh, approach us uh, about serving. And so, but when it came to uh, those with legal expertise, um, you know, that was an area that, um, that I felt was important, and so we, we made sure that we did some due diligence there to, uh, to look through and, and find the right person, so. Did you ask them how they voted on issue six? So you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, yes, that was part of the interview process. <laughs> what, well, I had to wait for the second question, I thought. I, very specific question. I, I believe both of my individuals had, uh, that of my appointments, had voted no uh, on the measure. Well, the others? Oh. Did your appointee vote yes or no? I'm not going to get into our dialogue, uh, pre and uh, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that uh, they would have a responsible uh, implementation of this. That's the important thing. And uh, that was my conversation. Uh, and I will say that we had a lot of people that inquired on this, uh, but, uh, and I'm glad that people are willing to engage in public service. There is a requirement under the amendment that if you're going to serve on the commission, you can have no uh, uh, entanglement with uh, the marijuana business or any application. And so you really had to say, we're going to be part of the regulatory process and we're going to step aside and not be engaged in the business. So that was a defining point. Uh, uh, and, and very important, of course, to make sure that everybody met that obligation. But uh, delighted with uh, uh, 
the responsiveness of the citizens willing to serve in this. Mr. Well, I, I'll kind of echo what the governor said. Our focus was uh, on how they would do the job moving forward. It wasn't so much on, um, you know, what their vote was. It was what their attitudes were and how they were going to, uh, to help us as we implement this and, and form up. And so that was with my focus. So I, my thoughts uh, were right along with where the governor was at. All right, isn't here. Uh, I, not, I don't believe they are. I know uh, Dr. Tillman uh, is at a uh, conference out of state. Uh, so, and, and it is important. I, I, I hope that uh, uh, the citizens of Arkansas and those that are interested in this don't start picking up the phone and calling the commissioners and saying, uh, you know, what do we need to do to get a license? Uh, because they don't know yet. Uh, they've got to meet. Uh, they have to uh, get a game plan and uh, and, and utilize the availability of staff and research. It's gonna be a lot of work. Uh, this is not, uh, and that's one of the things that I inquired about, do you have the time to devote to this? Uh, and, and so uh, it's gonna be a lot of work. Hope people are patient with the commission. Uh, I know that uh, under the amendment, uh, the Senate president calls the first meeting. And so uh, he might comment on when you think that might be called. <laughs> Number one, let him answer the question first on whether or not they voted yes or no. <laughs> so uh, on that, so there's a, the requirement of the amendment is, is uh, I think as of tomorrow, there's 15 days for the first meeting to be called. Uh, you know, while we were in discussions about uh, potential appointments just to ensure that we had a a good broad coverage uh, of backgrounds. Uh, we did not know the names. I will be making, or uh, my and staff will be making phone calls to the commissioners today to ensure that there's a time that works all, you know, well for all of them within the next 15 days. And as soon as we come to that date, we will notify notify you and the public. Do you have any thoughts on whether or not the licenses should be uh, awarded based on a lottery system or a merit system? Uh. The lottery system is uh, what has worked well with the, uh, uh, the permitting of uh, alcohol permits across Arkansas, so we're very familiar with that. And that means that any qualified or any applicant was first qualified to make sure they you know, have the financial wherewithal, that they've got the capacity, they've got wh whatever the requirements are set in place, and then a lottery would take place. That would be my inclination. Uh, I think that is something we have experience with. I think it is fair, uh, and it would uh, avoid having, uh, uh, you know, uh, huge businesses come in and dominate it. And so uh, uh, that's my inclination, but uh, first of all, I like to listen to other people too. There might be other viewpoints, and uh, I might be uh, uh, one of just a few voices on that topic, but that's, uh, that's my view and You're preference. No, I'm speaking of uh, Spencer for the growers, which would be the cultivation centers, uh, in reference to the uh, dispensaries. Uh, that's 20 to 40. Uh, no county can have more than four. Uh, I, I would think a similar process would be true for that as well. Uh, but here again, uh, that's uh, something the commission will have to consider. And I'm sure they want to hear from a lot of different viewpoints before a final decision is made. Governor, you want to give the uh, commission extra time, more time than, than the amount of gives it to uh, anything, sir? Well, we want to get it right. Uh, that's most importantly. And so we don't want to rush it. Uh, we only have one time to get it right. These licenses uh, are going to be, I suspect, uh, highly sought after. And so we want to have a process that has credibility and integrity and uh, makes sense. Uh, and uh, we have 120 days. Uh, that's what I've directed my agencies to proceed with is to develop the regulations within that time frame. Uh, there is some legislation, I believe, that uh, might consider delaying that. Uh, that's a legislative prerogative that I'll let them consider it uh, because there is a legislative review process for new regulations. And so, uh, but we're not going to slow the process up. We're going to do it right, but we're going to uh, intend to uh, have the regulations adopted within that time frame. Governor, can you, uh, oh, sorry. Can, uh, can you give an update on uh, the Arkansas waiver application? 
Uh, I can say that uh, I received a call uh, last night from Secretary Burwell who indicated that uh, uh, she will be issuing a letter today uh, that indicates the uh, waiver for Arkansas Works uh, will be granted uh, and that uh, she's directed their legal team to uh, prepare the paperwork on that. Are there any sticking points remaining? Or are we no, we ironed them all out. So uh, I'm, uh, we have the waiver that uh, we have negotiated with as a result of my trip to Washington and so it will be uh, given us the waiver that we have requested for the implementation of Arkansas Works. Any changes from what we've been asking for in the past? Well, there's some disagreements in the, in the uh, specifics on particularly the employee-sponsored insurance that probably makes the biggest difference that will have an impact on the long-term effectiveness of that program. But uh, the other side of the coin is that we'll be able to renew uh, a, uh, a permit application, the next administration, that will hopefully broaden uh, the uh, availability of the emphasis on employer-sponsored insurance as well as uh, increasing the reform in other areas. But uh, there's, there was one sticking point, but uh, we did get uh, the employer-sponsored insurance initiative. It just didn't go as far as we wanted. Can you be a little more specific on what it does? Uh, let's uh, visit afterwards because that's probably a little bit of a detailed question. We'd be happy to give you more information on that. While we have all three of you in yep. the room, the uh, Little Rock Board last night uh, took a vote on the uh, Orange and Virginia Harvey Week holiday and splitting them. Uh, it came up in 2015, went nowhere. Uh, people talked about trying it again. Arkansas is one of three states that still do this. Will it at some point become a, a point of embarrassment for the state? And is it something that needs to be addressed in 2017? I will be supportive of a measure to be considered by the General Assembly to uh, have Dr. Martin Luther King's holiday as a separate and distinct holiday and that uh, uh, General Lee's uh, uh, day of remembrance will, and will be moved uh, later to the fall. Uh, and so uh, that's a legislative uh, debate, uh, but I've made my position clear on it, and I hope the legislature will look favorably on that. Yeah. Yeah. Same would be in, in favor of separating the dates, um, and again, I expect there will be legislation to do so in the session. I think uh, it will be one of the bills that will be filed, uh, you know, just like there's a whole lot of other uh, areas of interest and so uh, I'm going to make sure that the process is in place and I'm going to allow the, the, the bills to work through just like I do all the other bills and uh, not try to, uh, to be an impediment to the process and so we'll see how it goes and if it originates in the Senate then we'll wait and see what we get from there but if it originates in the House we'll make sure it's taken care of in a responsible manner. So. If it isn't accomplished is that a badge we don't want to bear? Uh, that's for others to, 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 to dictate or uh, for their, their opinions, I can't be responsible for that. So I, the, what I have to be responsible for is to make sure that we have a, a good process in the House uh, and that things are done in a fair uh, manner, and that's what I'm going to be uh, making sure happens. I think we probably uh, covered the waterfront here, uh, and so uh, I'll be available for uh, a couple follow-up questions on uh, some specific items. I want to thank uh, uh, the President and the Speaker for uh, joining me today and for their work on this uh, commission.